Okay, so um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, stress grading, as it's sometimes called. Um, and I think before I do, I should offer an apology because I produced a video when my hair was shorter uh, talking about this and I made a mistake and that's, uh, that's not good. So we've, we've taken that video out uh, and today I'm going to talk about how stress grading actually does work. It doesn't have to be stress grading, but we're, talk we're talking here about uh, determining a property of wood, and that property happens to be, in this case, strength that I'm talking about. And that's called a grade determining property. And you can see that I haven't planned this at all well because nothing fits on the board. So it's a grade determining property. So you will see uh, various things uh, quoted, such as the, this timber is C16 or this timber is C24. And those numbers C16, C24 are based upon a very large number of studies that are done, in particular C stands for coniferous, so it's for the sort of the lower density timber products, very often things like spruce and pine and these sorts of things. And it's based on a huge number of studies that have been done looking at, in this particular case, we're looking at the relationship between stiffness, which is the indicating property, and strength, which is the grade determining property. And what we want to do is get a piece of timber that we know has predictable performance. So it's not so much a piece, it's all about populations. That's the important thing to remember about um, grading, grading systems. It's about populations, not about individual pieces. So when we do these experiments, we end up with some sort of distribution. And I have talked about this before. That distribution might include just about all of the experiments that we've done with very few outliers and it looks something like this and when we do a grade determining property we in this theoretical population let's say it's a c16 property we have a grade determining property that runs across here in this theoretical population and below that uh, that in that grade determining property there's five percent of that population will sit so when we do an indicating property, we have a grade determining property running across here. The population that we're looking at obviously isn't the theoretical population, it's an actual population of a, a, a large number of samples that we've looked at from a particular region of Europe and there are standards committees that decide how to divide these regions up. And based upon what the indic sorry, the grade determining property for C16 is, you can see why I get confused, everyone gets confused. We have to choose an indicating property for this population so that within this little group here, there is no more than 5%. Because when we're looking at something like stress grading, we use a 5 percentile. So this little group here, which in this line, everything below there, gets rejected and everything above this line gets accepted. Now within this population, within this distribution, and the standard has nothing to say about the actual shape of the distribution, but within that distribution there is 5% of the population below this indicating property value and 95% above. So we choose this indicating property to make sure that within this little group here there's no more than 5% of the population. <coughs> so that's how you choose where the indicating property is. Now, if you go for a different grade determining property, let's say we go for C24, that a, has a different value, C24, stronger timber. So now we have to move this indicating property so that we end up, again, in the situation where in this population there is no more than 5% sitting below that value there. So as a result of changing this from C16 to C24, we've actually rejecting a lot more timber. But I have to emphasise we're not talking about individual pieces. There's no individual piece that you say, oh, this has this particular property. We don't know anything about the individual piece. It's all about the behaviour of the population. And the reason that it's done this way is because the design rules are based upon assumptions about the population and that assumption is that 5% of that population sits below this line and then they design 
the appropriate safety factors to take account of that. If you want to know any more than this, please contact Dan Ridley Ellis at Edinburgh and AP University, who put me right on this one, I have to say. This obviously isn't my area of expertise. Thank you. <laughs>